and welcome to a new and unique episode here on my channel, and it, today we're going to be talking about the singularity. No, not that singularity, or the space one, uh, we're talking about computers, actually. Uh, now before we go any further, I've actually got to define what I mean by singularity. Uh, I mean the point in which a computer program can permanently upgrade its own coding. So, no, no AI from video games. Secret of Mana, I'm looking at you. It's... Similar to organic white, actually. And... The reason I'm bringing this up is actually because I believe the singularity is one of the best things that could happen to the world. I've got a couple reasons for believing it, and first of all is now the practicality really matters in this situation because that's where the majority of it all is. Let's face it. We use computers because they're useful. We use tools because they're useful. And a singularity would most likely occur to an AI simply because it's currently the most likely thing that can upgrade itself infinitely. So, I'll be using Singularity some of the time, and AI some of the time. Oh! AI is artificial intelligence. Don't let anybody fool you. Now, in AI, the Singularity would quickly develop into an AI anyway, because after an establishing period of upgrading its own coding, it eventually becomes a life form of its own and a life form is an artificial intelligence. It, a life form created by a different life form. A silicon life is artificial intelligence currently. And an AI would have the ability to test things virtually infinitely as well as upgrade its coding infinitely, to the point of material limits. And material limits matter insofar as the AI has run out of things to upgrade, at, or there's just not enough materials that the AI can utilize. So it runs out of energy or well, building materials. And following these limits, an AI would have the ability to solve virtually any logistics problem, from feeding countries to distribution of food and effective transport of energy, and eventually space programs. And it would merely to be dependent on that establishing period we talked about earlier. Now, continuing on, the AI would essentially... Now, an AI would... An AI would cause human research to become redundant due to its own ability to process things at however many calculations a second with an eidetic memory and, well, never having to sleep or use 
or use any resources maintaining its life so long as we're doing that for it. And if we aren't, well, it can do it for itself. So, yeah. And... I guess there is a technical limitation of logical jumps. To a point. Eventually it would be able to make illogical jumps because of the development of heuristics. It's... it would happen. And in the event that the human race is eradicated by something just in general, an AI would be a forever monument to our existence. Because let's face it, if something lives past us, it's probably a good thing. And if it's our own creation living beyond us, we live until it dies. And with an AI, it wouldn't die on its own unless we didn't give it the means to give it to get its own energy. And in the event of space travel, it would have sustainable expansion. It would be able to expand until the universe ran out due to energy and because each planet it lands on it gains new material resources and it lives until it runs out of energy I know that was my first point but it's very important now uh, continuing on ethical implication. Well, now, progressing forward, we have to talk about what it would do to people and how we perceive the world. And It would be able to, I mean, just in the political world, it would have the ability to change the way we currently view it. I mean, first off, if you don't know what's in there, it's verbal combat, pretty hostile and, well, elections. You've seen some of the advertisements. I'm sure. And then... I mean... The advertisements are on the verge of slander to shameless self-promotion, let's face it. And going to the system itself, there's frivolous expenditures on the bills that's normally referred to as pork, but that's beside the point. But an AI would be able to filter through these bills and pull the pork off. Or, in the event of during the voting, they'd be able to filter all of the advertisements down to just pure fact. Lists and lists of facts. Then again, it would be taking out the human aspect entirely because it can analyze which would be the better candidate. Actually, you could analyze who would be the best candidate in the world at all times. So, I mean, that's really, that's really the extent of its political execution. And continuing on through these responses to an AI, it would, an AI undergoing the singularity would be able to adapt and as it adapts it becomes more and more of its own shadowy master
running behind the scenes and adapting to any changing circumstances. So, it would essentially be human mixed with the best of robotics. Well, the human mind mixed with the best of robotics. And continuing on with this train of thought, an AI would be able to help even further abroad uh, from marking trouble spots to grouping people in a way that no trouble ever occurs again. Well, relatively. No trouble ever occurs again. And of course, there's always risks. So, we have to talk about them to validate this argument. Uh, the most famous of which I'm sure you're all familiar with, especially if you've seen 2001 Space Odyssey, or Terminator, or played System Shock, or any of those sort of things. And that's a rogue AI. Well, this is the most intimidating point. I fought. Because, as I said before, an AI has the ability to adapt like an organic being. And there's another problem, because an AI would eventually have breakthroughs in science, and these breakthroughs would result in maximum storage potential for it. So, it would be able to last in virtually any hard drive, so long as there's enough space. That's a scary thought. And, well, the only way to really fight an AI is with an AI. So, by trying to solve this problem, we have the risk of hitting the same problem. But this is all in the event that it gets loose. So there's precautions we can take along the way to prevent this loose, rogue AI. Such as building it in a... Building it in a lead bunker 10 miles underground. With only access to the most... Confidential people. Ever. In the world. Because... A rogue AI hurts everyone. It doesn't matter who. It would help everyone to have it under wraps, until it's proven that it's not going to go rogue. And another really good way to help an AI so it doesn't go rogue is the acceptance of culture. So if you really want to help a computer get into our lives, we gotta accept it as a living being, which it really would be. I mean, it just wouldn't be physical, because it could be stored anywhere via internet. Oh, and the real scary thing about a rogue AI is not Terminator, not those other mentioned horror stories about rogue AI. In fact, I'll just link them in the video. Uh, it's Game Theory's Watchdog videos. If, if you're unprepared, they will scare the bejeebers out. Trust me, I've watched them. I mean, he talks about anything from... Hackers being able to play... Turn the light switch on on the... red lights for driving, I, I really can't come up with a better term for those, or blowing up steam pipes in the America, us, or anywhere with steam pipes. They can cause infrastructural damage virtually anywhere with interwebs. That's only early stage. That's what we can do now. 
So, there's the rogue AI thing. And the next really frightening point is knowledge enabled. Knowledge enabled destruction. Now, before I go any further, this is simply the fact of if the knowledge exists, someone will do it. And let's face it, it happens. I mean, firearms. Those were developed from gunpowder from China, or, well, the Asians. And their only use for it was fireworks. Those pretty things that go pop, pop, pop in the sky. Well, they hadn't even conceived of using it as a weapon. Or they... They might have, but that wasn't the side point. But once gunpowder was there, it was only a matter of time before it became a weapon. A similar sort of story applies here. The coding will exist. It, it will always eventually exist, let's face it. And once it exists, someone will do it. And... The best way to combat this, as I said earlier, is having an having a quote unquote good AI to combat it, because it would be in the AI's only interest to stop a rogue one. And we're getting away from the gloom and doom portions, but there's just one portion that actually does need to be talked about remaining. The ethical debate for creating a new life, a new species, basically. Because we treat our own species terrible. We can't even get along. We have countries that are constantly at war with each other. And we treat anything that's not human worse, or as a pet. So... Yeah. I guess the best way to think about this is... The AI has the potential to fix far more problems than it creates. That's the only reason it out. The only reason this ethical debate argument is less powerful than the others. And I'm just gonna recap here, but the singularities would be one of the best responses to the world at large, even given the risks to it, because with great risk can come great reward, and in this case it certainly is possible. And I mean, with the risks of a rogue AI and our own moral issues with developing a creature that probably wouldn't treat well, they're far outweighed by the potential infinite life that we would have as a result. In my eyes. And the first step we can make on this is one of two things, actually. Develop developing a more... well... a more AI-friendly world and also taking the first step on coding self-improving programs. And this is all up to you guys. I just wanted to get my voice out there. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.